when it comes to DFS, there are actually two ways to implement DFS. First one is a recursive way using recursion and second one is an iterative way. So first I'm going to show you that how does recursion works on a DFS and what is a typical flow of using recursion looks like for a tree and also for a graph. I'm going to show you both the examples. Now before understanding and diving deep into the DFS, first you need to understand that how does a typical recursion works. Now if you don't know how, what, what recursion is or how recursive functions behave, I encourage you to first go ahead and study recursion. Now in this example, we have we have a binary tree and for this binary tree, we will try to do the in order traversal for this binary tree. Now again, in order traversal means in the left node and then right. This is the logic we are going to apply. So initially we are located at this first position. Now let's let me show you how the recursion is going to work for this tree using this root node example. Currently for this root node, we are going to apply the logic of left node and right. So first for this node, uh, we will check that whether does it has left child or left subtree. Yes, it does has left subtree entirely. Now even for this left subtree, again, we will have to apply the same logic of left node and right. So in this case, whatever we were implementing for this node or for this root node, now we are, we are going to treat this node number two as our root node, stating that even for this entire subtree, if this was a tree on its own, again, if we had to use in order traversal, we would use this logic on left node and right. And that way we are going to again for this root node, try to see that does it has a left child? And yes, it does have a left child that is node number one. But this node number one does not have any uh, children of its own. So this is going to be our terminating case where we will get out of the recursion because we cannot go anywhere further and we can actually mark node this we can actually treat this node as being like a process. So we are now at this position for this particular one and this is how recursion is going to end for this portion at this particular node that we are done with it. So first node we are going to visit is going to be node number one. Again, now we are going to do the backtrack and back after backtracking even for this true again we are going to apply the same logic that left we have already taken care of but uh, node we haven't taken care of so now we will mark node because we visited all the left sub subchilds possible for this root node but even for this root node it still has a right subchild and again if this right subchild say for an example it had additional children we would have again used this left node right logic but since it does not have any additional children, we are going to treat this as a terminating case for recursion. And then the next node we are going to visit is going to be node three. After visiting this, now we have taken care of all of these three nodes. And now we will go back to our no root node. Again, we took care of the entire left subtree for this uh, root node. So now we are going to mark four as visited as well that we already took care of it. But we are yet to take care of the right side of the subtree. Again, rather than treating as a right subtree, we can treat this as a subtree or as a tree on its own where we are applying the DFS. And again, for this node number five, we are going to visit the left child or left subtree first. But since it does not have any left subtree, we are going to visit node number five itself because we are visiting the node. After visiting node number five, we will have to apply the same logic for the right subtree. And again, for the right subtree, we will have to visit node number seven and node number six. But again, from node number seven, we have a left child, which is node number six. So we are going to visit node number six first before backtracking and visiting node number seven. And since seven does not have any right child, we are able to go back. And now we have visited the entire tree on its own and we are done with the recursion. Now, every single time, Whenever we meet this condition or whenever we have been able to mark the nodes, then we would call the recur we would backtrack and come back again until we are done with every single node inside the given tree. And every single time we are iterating over a new set of subtree, we are going to call our recursive function to implement the depth first search logic again. And this is how recursion would work on a tree. Let's see how the logic is going to change or remain the same for a graph structure as well. Now, even for a graph, again, the logic is going to remain same. We are going to have a recursive function. We are also going to have some terminating condition that how when we define that the node has been completely visited and we can move forward. 
and again in the graph since we are applying the depth for search we are going to keep on going in one branch before going in the other branch so say for an example in this graph we start iterating from node number three because in the graph we have the flexibility to go in any particular direction now every single uh, element in the graph has two items it has a vertices and it has an edges and depending on the vertices and edges combination every single vertices has one or more than one neighbors and we are going to visit every single neighbor now you already know that for a graph we will have to take care of all the nodes we have visited otherwise we would end up in a uh, infinite loop so we are going to have a visited hash set that is going to be much much of a help to us and using this visited hash set we would be able to create a terminating condition for our recursive function so let's just start iterating from graph uh, node number three now currently first neighbor we are going to visit for node number three is going to be node number six currently node number six is not visited we are going to mark it as visited again for node number six we are going to call the same recursive function that is going to call the neighbors of node number six now since node number six does not have any neighbors uh, the only neighbor it has is node number three but since node number three is where we started visiting so let's just mark node number three as currently visiting as well okay and now we are not going to go back to node number three so now we are going to mark node number six as visited and after that so this is going to be the terminating condition for a node to be considered as visited that if we have taken care of every single neighbor for that particular node so for node number six we are done we are going to do our backtrack and from node number three again we are going to move to the next node neighbors that is not node number six this is the key part that is not node number six because we already mark it as visited again for node number three let's just say we go in the direction of node number four so we mark node number four as visited now again for the node number four we are going to apply the same logic and treat that as if the graph is starting its traversal from node number four because we are using our recursive function to call the next subsequent nodes and the for node number four okay node number three we cannot go to node number five we can so again mark five as visited again from five go to node number two again from node two go to node number one so okay five two one and again from node number one eventually we will come back to node number three and since there are no other nodes left we are going to be done with every single element now again for this case now at node number third's position since we took care of every single neighbor of node number three we are going to consider node number three as done and the completion of dfs because all the nodes that were present where we were able to visit them in a single go and they are all ma mentioned in the visited hash set if we want we could have plotted on our on our graph as well that after visiting node number six we would go come back to node number three then we would go to four and then five and then two and then one and again come back to three but we are not going to do that so this would be like a traversal path it could also be possible that there is one more node node number seven over here that is not connected with any edge and there could be possible that there is also one more node number seven and eight that is not connected with any edge so again for this one after traversing all of these values still we are going to use recursive to go recursion to go over these two nodes and we are going to add them to our visited hash set and then we are going to add them to our uh, nodes that we have processed in some way shape or the other form and this is how recursion would work typically for graph and uh, tree data structure there is only one difference between recursion and uh, iteration but in order to understand first we will have to understand that how does an iterative uh, dfs works so let's just see an example that how does a iterative dfs work now again for the iterative procedure i'm going to show an example for a tree and also for a graph but i'm going to explain you very quickly and the way iteration is going to work is that we are actually going to use stacks in order to implement our dfs function now we all know that what is the property of a stack a simple property property of a, st a stack is that last in first out lifo is the property and that is what we are going to use at the most that the we are going to create a stack and inside the stack we are going to add our root node and again we are doing the in order traversal okay so uh, root uh, left root node so first we are going to add node number one over here okay now after adding node number one we are going to see that does it has a left child yes it does has left child so who is the left child left child is node number two 
again for node number two does it has left child yes it does the node number four so we are going to mark four node number four over here again for node number four does it has a left child no because it does not have a left child which means now we will have to process node number four so we are going to pop node number four out and after popping node number four out uh currently the first node we are going to visit is going to be node number four now after popping node number four out again for node number two it does not have a left child that we haven't taken care of so we are going to add the uh, node number two next then again for node number two we haven't taken care of node number five so after popping node number four and two we are going to push node number five again for node number five it does not have any more children so we are again going to pop node number five next after popping node number five we are going to backtrack so we already took care of all of these three now we are at node number one position we are going to pop node number one out because we are doing in order traversal but after popping node number one out it still has right child that we haven't taken care of so we are going to push node number three again and even for this node number three it does not have a left child so we are we have been able to pop the node number three out after popping node number three out we still haven't taken care of the right child uh, right children or right sub three so again for node we are going to push node number six after pushing node number six we are going to check that whether node number six has any left child or not yes it does so because there is a left child we will have to do a push operation so we are going to push node number seven node number seven does not have any more children so that is a terminating case so we are going to pop node number seven out and after popping node number seven we would be able to pop node number six and then we would be done with our iteration and this is how in order traversal is going to work using a iterative method for depth for search basically we are using stack to keep track of the nodes that we already entered and that is going to allow us to implement our backtrack much efficiently and we would be able to solve this problem let's just do the same thing with a graph now this looks like a tree but this is actually a graph because there exists a loop inside this uh, typically trees does not have a loop but graphs do so that is why this is a graph again let's just uh, implement our iterative method we are going to use stack we are going to use the property of last in first out and in our stack uh, again we are also going to have a visited hash set because this is tree so we will definitely need this say for an example we start traversing from node number four uh, node number two we put node number two in the end now who are the neighbors of node number two so first neighbor is node number four okay now who are the neighbors of node number four none because node number four does not have any neighbors that we have and also we are going to mark two and four as visited now because there are no other nodes that are visited uh, that are not visited and they are neighbors of four then we are going to do a pop operation so first node we are going to pop out is going to be node number four after node number four we are again back at node number two still it has neighbors that we haven't visited so let's just say we visit node number one we mark one as visited we add entry one over here again one has neighbor three that we haven't visited so one and three comes into the stack and visited has set again three has node six that we haven't visited so six uh, comes here again six has seven that we had haven't visited so seven also comes in the stack and also in the visited hash set now from seven it does not have any more that we cannot visit so now we are going to pop seven out so after four we can say that okay let's just say seven has been popped out now again we are at this junction six for this junction junction six we haven't taken care of node number five and that hasn't been visited so we are going to mark node number five over here as well and from this node number four now every single neighbor uh, of this node number five has been visited so now we can simply do our pop operation so first node number five is going to pop out then node number six is going to pop out and every single element is going to keep on popping out in the recursive fa fashion so then three one and two are going to pop out and this would be like one of the traversals and everything we did we did not use recursion we use the iterative method using stacks so this is a key point to remember whenever you have to implement stack with an iteration then uh, sorry whenever you have to visit whenever you have to use dfs iteratively you must use stack because this is the golden rule and every single interviewer if you show them recursive solution they are going to ask you that hey can you do it iteratively if you show them iterative solution they are going to ask you to do it recursively so it's good to know both the methods